What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm going to be showing you the latest version of the Evolution x Storm that is the version 5.7 and this is the latest official build 4th May 2021 build over here and as you are noticing this build over here says 1GB but it is more than that because it includes the G apps and of course you need the MIUI vendor and stuff to flash this ROM and if you want to flash this and if you don't know how to flash this ROM on the Redmi K20 Pro click on the card right there. I'll list all the important links in the description box below so do not worry. Now in the system section this is how it looks like you can check for updates from here and as you can see it shows the Android version as 11, Evolution X version as 5.7 and the security patch it comes with is May 5th 2021. And you can see the more settings are there in the system section and in the gestures we have the swipe trick screenshot and stuff and let me tell you this screenshot supports the scrolling then you can edit and like share over here as you are noticing edit delete share options are there so yeah lot of options are there in terms of the screenshots in the power menu we have the device control sensitive content and stuff then we have the skip music track adaptive playback etc now in the system navigation gestures we have the full screen gestures over here and if you go into the settings we do have the amount of screen height to be used for the back gesture then the dead zone and the show pill bar or you can hide that and here we have the advanced gestures that is the extended swipe action you can set custom actions over here for this and we also have the gesture bar length customization and then the gesture bar radius customization and as you are noticing right now my pill bar looks quite thick and quite long and that's the reason why it looks like this we have the haptic feedback then the back gesture animation and stuff so a lot of customizations in terms of the gesture navigation and two button and three button navigation is also there then we have the quickly open camera double tap option is also there double tap to sleep i mean in the front camera settings we now have the sound effects and as you can see we of course have the star wars and the super mario sound effects too then we have the camera led and stuff and here we have the default keyboard as gboard and in the android version section it has the evolution x logo up top then we have the android 11 kind of thing over here as you are noticing and we have the security patch again may 5th 2021 the stock kernel is still per g kernel again the build date is 4th may 2021 now first what has changed what i have been noticing new over here i would say yes the evolution x's flavor still remains and it still is a really good experience like i have been using this rom from past two to three days now and my experience has been great so far let me just go into the settings of the stock launcher and it is really good over here that we now have the double tap to sleep in the pixel launcher so that is great we have the shayasans over here you can disable them then we have the overview shayasan and the add app icons to the home screen and stuff all those things are there including the double tap to sleep that is new so yeah right now you can double tap anywhere in the home screen to make the phone sleep and yes as you are noticing double tap to sleep did work super fine let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed now with my left hand's thumb and as you are noticing it unlocks flawlessly as you can see again right now i'll show from the lock screen so yeah again from the lock screen too the unlocking speed is super fine let me try one more time and as you can see if you're noticing up close there is the like fingerprint scanner animation over here and they do work flawlessly so yeah very reliable fingerprint scanner experience over here and on the stock launcher to the left we get the google's discovered page swiping down gets you to the notification or the quick settings panel swiping up gets you to the app drawer widgets and stuff are working fine and the overall like experience with the stock launcher is pretty like smooth over here no issues that i have faced now talking about the quick settings panel i have added couple of toggles over here but let me show you you can edit and add multiple toggles over here but what i have added i'll show you now now first we have the android 11 screen recorder and with this you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time so that is great also there is a night light and the battery saving and stuff then we have the heads up hotspot etc then we have to not disturb data saver everything always on display you can disable or enable from here also there is a mute or ringer kind of toggle and if you hold on it as you can see it like brings the volume panel over here and you can like adjust the volume from here as you can see you can expand it just like this so yeah very cool we have the fps counter also so if you enable it the fps will come over here so yeah fps info or fps counter toggle is working fine dc dimming is also there then we have the power menu option and here as you can see if you tap on the power menu it brings the power menu of course has this smart light kind of features then if you go into the advanced we have the advanced reboot features you can directly reboot to recover your fast boot from here of course then we have the gaming mode and also we get the oxygen waste kind of screen recorder as you can see with this you can change the frame rate then the bit rate and everything like the resolution and stuff 
everything you can customize with the Oxygenos kind of screen recorder and they are working fine. Jumping into the settings and this is how the settings panel looks like. It has the profile picture logo over here and you can search in the settings over here. Jumping into the Evolver settings and here you will find all the customizations of course. Now first if you go into the themes we have these lock screen clock style first but there you will have plethora of like lock screen clock options right now. I have been using it with the S funny one but you can also have these gradient fire and stuff then the ID, ID Java and stuff is there. Let me try the gradient fire. I'm not really sure how it looks. Okay, so this is how it looks. Yeah, pretty cool. And it has this bootleggers kind of logo in the, this is the always on display by the way, not the lock screen. So it has this colors on the bottom and it shows the date and stuff over here. So yeah, pretty cool looking like clock over here that you are getting. Yes, I have been noticing this kind of flickering over here if you are noticing. Once I unlock the screen sometimes does flicker, which is not a huge issue, but yes, it does that. And we have the weather option over here. Then if you scroll down, we have the headline and body font option. And as you are noticing, plethora of body fonts that you are getting over here. So yeah, then we have the dark theme option. And once you enable it, you will get the color bucket. And from there, you can select page black to get the amulet black experience over here. Also, there is the accent color picker and you can pick from any kind of accent color over here, whatever you want. Then we have the icon shapes and these many icon shapes that you get. Then also the icon packs are there and the settings dashboard kind of icons are there. Then we have the switch style. This is for the toggles in the settings over here. You can change their style to Oxygen OS 11, Retro Material Design 2 and stuff like that. And then we have the G visual mod and from here in the rounded corners, I have selected to uh, Android 12 and that's the reason why if you're seeing these rounded boxy rounded kind of look over here, that is happening because of this Android 12 option. You can also set it to rectangle, medium and stuff. Then we have nav bar colors. You can set the pill bar color to anything else. Then we have the header size and stuff. You can customize that. Also the status bar height model, you can change that. Then we have the volume panel customization. By default, the stock panel looks like this. You can also have it on the expanded compact audio tiled or the MIUI compact option. Also, there is a custom header style and stuff. You can customize those. Then we have the quick setting toggle style. You can change the whole quick setting toggle style to anything from here. Then we have the tint style of the quick setting toggle. I have been using it with the Android 12. So whichever toggles are off, as you can see, they are on the lighter colors, whichever is off. Like if I enable this one, as you can see, they become a little bit more bluish depending on the color of your accent color it becomes a little bit light in the android 12 mode whenever you set that or you can go with the oxygen waste colors in the dark theme the toggles will be white and in the light theme the toggles will be black so that's how it is in the oxygen OS. and then also we have the accent color option or the default option you can go with then we have the framework defaults and stuff i'm not really sure what that does then we have the background alpha this is for the quick setting panel blur and stuff you can customize that that's it for the themes. Now jumping into the status bar, we have the network traffic indicator. Then we have the clock and date. You can customize that from here. Then we have the battery bar and stuff. Battery indicator is also there. And in the battery style, we have the icon portrait dotted circle and stuff over here. No big dotted circle though. Then we have the battery percentage next to the icon or inside the icon. Then we have battery percentage when charging and stuff. Then if you scroll down, we have the system icons. We have the headset, Bluetooth, Volti, etc. icons over here. NFC and stuff is there, but the Indian Redmi K20 Pro does not have NFC. And here we have the show 4G instead of LTE, roaming indicator and stuff like that. Then inside notifications, we have the heads up disabling or enabling option. Then notification headers you can enable. Notification light and the battery light option is there. So you can have the battery light when like do not disturb and stuff. Show on always on. This is for the edge lighting stuff. And in call vibration options are there. So you can have the vibrate on connect, call waiting or disconnect. Let me go back. We have the quick settings here. We have the quick pull down or the smart pull down. Then if you scroll down, we have the tile, rows, etc. column and row number customization. And the brightness slider, you can have it on the bottom. And auto brightness option is there. Show at bottom whenever expanded option is there for the brightness, I guess. And brightness control again is there. So you can just like scroll on this. I mean, not scrolling, just swiping on this status bar at just the brightness. Very handy feature for me and I do use it on a daily basis, you guys know. So yeah, very important feature for me and I like this feature. And we have the battery estimates, then the edit icon and stuff. Let me go back to the power menu. We have the system settings. This is again normal things. Let me go back. Advanced reboot is enabled right now. In the gestures, we have the system settings. And here it has this normal gestures which you find in the system. And we have the long press power and toggle torch, then the brightness control again, then the swipe to screenshot, double tap to check phone and double tap to sleep over here. 
and in the lock screen we have the always on scheduling option so you can schedule the always on display only in daytime or nighttime whichever you like or you can just put it on disabled if you want the always on to be always on and we have the other things like the fingerprint error vibration authentication vibration but let me tell you there is no option for the always unlock with the fingerprint scanner or force fingerprint it's just missing from here in the fingerprint icons we have these many icons it's same pretty much and we have the fingerprint pressed color you can change it to these many options then also if you scroll down we have the recognizing animation i have been using it with the pulsar but you can also go with the cyberpunk 2077 or any other fingerprint scanner animation that you like mclaren ripple everything else is there then we have the lock screen info over here status bar options and stuff but let me tell you one thing that i cannot simply find the lock screen charging info option i'm not really sure if they removed it or something but the lock screen charging info is simply missing from the ui as of right now on this evolution x5.7 now in the buttons we have the navigation bar the system navigation gestures again and we have the volume rocker wake show volume panel on the left side click to take partial screenshot stuff like that in the animations we have the disable transition animation and we have the screen off animation you can change it to default crt or scale back gesture animation charging animation everything is there scrolling cast you can customize that and the animation style for the quick toggles are there too so you can change the interpolator and stuff let me go back to the misc settings here we have the gaming mode the screenshot settings also we have the launch music app while connecting the headset and usb configuration is still there very convenient feature for me at least and if you scroll down we have the force brightness values for the always on display and stuff and in the about section of course we have the evolution x logo and the like developing stuff like telegram group and stuff you can go right from here also you can donate to the developers from here of course now talking about volte calling or view wi-fi both should be working fine here but there is no call recording option on the default dialer by the way i have been using it with this bluetooth headset that is the boat rocker 335 working great i'll do a full review on the boat rocker 335 soon so stay tuned for that if you're interested in a great neck band style bluetooth headset now in the battery settings this is how it looks like we have the full battery usage if you tap here you will see the full battery usage and it shows the percentage the battery icon then we have the thermal profiles and the gaming mode and stuff kind of thing and you can choose per app from here to the performance or the gaming mode or benchmarking mode over here as you can see all these modes are there then we have the battery saver then the adaptive battery if you scroll down we have the smart charging smart cutoff this is depending on the temperature and stuff then if you scroll down more we have the last full charge then the screen on time and also we have the design battery capacity the current battery capacity the charging cycles and the battery temperature everything is showing up over here so no complaints in terms of the battery settings only thing is that there is no lock screen charging info even in the battery settings and of course 18 watt and 33 watt both fast charging are working flawlessly here no issues whatsoever and talking about the battery life i would say it can definitely give you six to seven hours of screen on time over here with normal kind of usage or even with heavy usage you can get six hours of screen on time easily in the display settings we have the brightness level the adaptive or auto brightness inside lock screen we have the always show time and info then if you scroll down we have the always on while charging and stuff then the ambient pulse on new track etc in the advanced settings we have these many options and we have wake screen for notification and stuff if you want to enable them now we have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes and we have the dark theme option again font size display dpi etc customization night light and the live display option is also there so you can have the picture assessment and also have the color calibration mode over here and let me scroll down we have the styles and wallpapers and here you can also customize the theme and inside wallpapers we have these live wallpapers as you are noticing so yeah plethora of wallpapers that you get you can download even more in the grid option we have up to this 5 by 5 grid let me go back we have the rotation settings we have the 180 degree rotation and stuff double tap to wake pocket detection enable blurs option is there then inside anti flicker mode we also have the dc dimming feature let me go back in the sound settings and over here we have all the sound settings show volume panel on the left is present again ringtone vibration pattern you can change it from here and if you scroll down more we have the dial pad tones charging sound charging vibration everything you can disable from here and then we have the me audio direct and from here as you can see we have the youth edition and stuff and all these presets let me tell you the sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well is amazing over here no issues whatsoever it also has these presets over here also there is a bass booster with that the sound quality just becomes a lot more like bass heavy 
So yeah, these presets are there. Also, there is a hi-fi audio option if you want to use that. Then there is a clear speaker option. If your speakers has some dust or something, you can clear them with this kind of toggle over here. In the security section, this is how it looks like. In the settings, we have this quick unlock, screen off fingerprint or the screen off FOD kind of thing is there. And we have the power button instantly locks, lock screen after five seconds and scramble pin layout is there. Now, let me set up the face unlock quickly. So seems like setup was done perfectly. Right now, let's just double tap over here. Now double tap to wake. Okay, so right now if I swipe up and yeah, you have to swipe up over here. That is a good thing. Like even if it gets pressed somehow accidentally in your pocket, like double tapped, it won't like pop out the front camera over here. You have to actually swipe up, then only it will like bring the pop-up camera. So yeah, that is good. Also, there is the app locker, which is right now there in all the ROMs mostly. And for this, you can just simply click on this lock icon of any app and that will lock each particular app over here. You can also hide their notifications from here. And if you select on this lock app after instantly 15 seconds or screen off, I have been using it with the 15 seconds one. And let me show you. This is how the app locker interface looks like. And if you tap on the fingerprint, of course, it will unlock or you can use the pin or your face data over here without any issues. It should work. Now let's talk about the stock camera. Well, here you get this basic kind of camera that is the Snapdragon camera, I guess. And yes, I'm not really sure how much I like this camera to be a stock camera over here on this ROM. But yeah, this is the stock camera that you get. And because of this camera, I have installed a next camera over here and with magisk of course and if you want to flash the anx camera with magisk you can click on the card right there also in that video you can see like how i made the safety net to be working after flashing magisk but let me show you the anx camera is working perfectly fine like the 0.66 the 2x lens and even the front camera and stuff everything is working fine and even in the video settings if you go let me show you there is the 4k 60fps option should be working perfectly fine there is also the pro mode working and even like if you switch the front camera and then switch to portrait mode or something that is working perfectly fine no issues whatsoever with the anx camera but yes i have installed it separately again card right there or you can check out the description for the anx camera flashing guide also if you don't flash magic if you don't need anx camera the safety net will be passing right out of the box but here I have flashed Magisk and even after that I have the safety net working because I made some tweaks in Magisk and if you want to see them again watch that ANX camera video and yes as you are noticing everything is passing so no issues with the banking apps over here. Also talking about the DRAM info one more time is that I have L3 because I have broken it but if you have not broken your DRM certification it should be perfectly fine for you because this is a MIUI vendor based ROM over here so no issues with that. Now talking about daily driving performance, it should be perfectly fine. Let me open a couple of apps which I have opened already. Okay, Chrome is reloading and Facebook is in memory. Twitter is reloading. Play Store is reloading too. Let me open YouTube. Yes, it is reloading too. So yeah, the RAM management as you can see is not that great maybe. Google Home still in memory. Spotify is reloading. So yeah, pretty much most of the apps are reloading. So the RAM management is not that great, but in terms of benchmarks, it should be fine. As you can see, like you won't see any kind of starters or lags over here. The apps might reload here and there because the RAM management is not that great maybe. So that's how the experience is with the Evolution X version 5.7 latest belt on the Redmi K20 Pro. Let me know in the comments. What do you guys think? Please share this video if you liked it and Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDNTech signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.